Hi, I am Fiat, author of It Can Happen to You and Innocence GA, both available on Smashwords and Amazon. And I'm here to talk about are your words hurting or helping someone? And in other words, watch your mouth. Yeah, I know the drill. I have notes. I work better when I have notes, so I'll be looking down um, periodically. So, yeah, let's get right into it. So for a huge part of my life, I was always known as that one who would cut folks with their tongue. Cut, cut, cut folks with my tongue, rather. Cussing you out, saying hurtful things, um, especially when I felt attacked or felt like if someone was playing me. Uh, I'm not quite sure where I got that from, but I'm sure it will come up when I continue my therapy sessions. And sadly, I used to pride myself in being verbally abusive and felt as if getting back at someone and hurting them with words was much better than fist fighting. And that saying, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can never hurt me. That couldn't be any further from the truth because what someone has said to me has had a longer and more lasting impact on me than any fight that I've ever been in. So uh, the reason why I wrote this video, why the reason why I'm making this video is because um, to say what someone said to me um, several years back, over 10 years ago, and she has no idea that I, I feel this way, but I don't think she realized what she said. Um, so I'm going to just fast forward. I'm going to backtrack and fast forward a little bit. Um, I was pregnant when I graduated high school in 1993. So I didn't go to college right after. But when I did, I struggled to choose a major because I had so many interests. I felt like I was good at a lot of things. And really because since education was not enforced in my home, I knew that I needed to at least graduate high school. But talks of college and what I wanted to do when I grew up were never talked about. So I pretty much winged it, um, you know, for the most part. In high school, I took up typing and speed writing and um, those kind of courses. So I pretty much, for he was uh, like a big part of my life. I held down clerical, you know, office type jobs. And even when I moved to Georgia, I did go to school there and I got a, an um, administrative office um, specialist certificate. And getting that certificate helped me sustain gainful employment pretty much for all of my adult life. So I am proud for doing that. And I became really good at what I did. Like um, I mentioned before, as far as I can type really fast and I know a lot about um, computers, pro computer programs and Microsoft, Word, you know, all that stuff you need to know when you're a secretary, but I still felt like I needed more. So in, um, when I moved back from Georgia in 2000, I got a job with an agency that provided education and training to uh, nonprofit agencies uh, for HIV and AIDS, those who were infected and affected with HIV AIDS. So I was surrounded by trainers who presented this information and became intrigued by that because I felt like that was something, excuse me, that I could do. But everyone that I worked with held a degree, which I did not. I did go to school and get that business office business certificate, but that was not the equivalent of having a bachelor's degree. So even though I watched them for five years present at different trainings and felt that I was equipped to do so, I could never apply for a position because I did not hold that actual degree. And it could have been a degree in gym. Physical education it didn't matter. And I remember one of the trainers, we were talking because I decided to go back to school. I've always been um, fond of education. I really love to learn. So I've been going to school off and on since 1998. I do not have a degree because, like I said, I cannot choose a major. So at this particular time, I thought I had chosen one. I told one of the trainers that I was going to go to school for English because I was always good at that in high school. So why not? 
And her response was, you must plan on being unemployed for the rest of your life. Now, looking back at that, I don't really feel like she meant to be, meant that to be really harmful. She probably was just, you know, telling her truth. Like she pretty much felt like maybe those who obtain English degrees, it's hard for them to get a job. I don't know. We did not expound on the conversation. It pretty much just shot me in the heart, like my decision and my choice and the major that I felt like I finally nailed down. This was it. And when she said that, I kind of just felt like, okay, that's not good enough. So I changed my major again. It's gone from sociology to creative writing to film studies to anthropology. Um, you name it. I've changed my major to that. So the purpose of this video is to say, be mindful of what you say to someone because you never know the impact it will have on them. Now, I'm not totally blaming her for my not choosing to get a degree in English, but I am saying that you just never know the mindset and the headspace that someone is in for when, when you say certain things to them. So, what are your words saying when you're talking to someone? What are your intentions? So from now on, I've been practicing this for a while because like I said, I'm working on me daily and I noticed my, the, the way that I talk and I've been trying to, I've been changing that for a while now. And that's what I'm saying. What I noticed is what you say to someone can either, either hurt them or help them. And I'm going to choose my words carefully to help people because I know the devastating effects of saying something to someone and having that hurt them. So that's what this, this is what my video is about. And as far as school goes, I am like three credit, I'm not three credits, three classes shy of an associate's degree. So let me tell y'all, I was really close to getting my associate's degree. I was one class short. And it was a science class that I needed. So I know I shouldn't have waited to the last minute, but I did. And instead of getting a C or better, I got a C minus. So in essence, I failed. And now that I've waited so long, the classes that I took back in, you know, <laughs> in the 1800s, I know the 10 classes that I took back like in 2000 or so from this community college that I've been going to since then, they are no longer valid. So at one point when I only had one class, which was the science class to get my associates in general studies. Now those classes that I've taken back then don't count anymore. So it's at like three classes that I have to take to get my associate's degree. So, which is another hurdle, but I will do it eventually only because not because now I don't feel like I need a degree to be where I want to be in life. I would want to do it just so I can say that I accomplished it finally. So I do plan on going back to at least finish that part of it. Comment, share, subscribe, inbox me on Facebook, text me. I've had a couple of people text me in regards to my videos and open up to me. And I think that's good because someone is watching. Remember, if you want to get somewhere, don't stop until you get there. Bye.